this is Dr. Eric Thomas for Nutmeg Dermatology and Middlesex Dermatology talking today about one of my favorite and one of my newer techniques in the office. It's been so nice to have it available. Very good. People seem to do very well and they appreciate avoiding surgery. We're talking here about superficial or shallow radiation therapy for non-melanoma skin cancers, basal cell carcinomas or squamous cell carcinomas, and it also can be used for certain type of raised scars called keloids. So we'll go into all that briefly. But what is it? How dangerous is it? What's the history of it? So first of all, many years ago, very soft x-rays were used all the time in dermatology. Something like 45% of dermatology offices had them, and now I've seen them in offices. We used to have it at a New York hospital, although it was more of a very shallow or Grenz ray therapy. But um, it, the equipment became a little hard to obtain because X-ray equipment is excellent for the skin, but not so good for internal cancers like uh, lung cancer. So when radiation therapy departments could get better equipment for their purposes, they got rid of the old x-ray equipment. We could still use the new stuff, but it was like using that proverbial cat and uh, swat a fly. But enough of that. How does it work? Well, first of all, we do have to be sure that it is a low-grade non-melanoma skin cancer, so a biopsy is necessary. But with any luck, that's all the surgery that will be required. Of course, there are other ways to do uh, these uh, lesions, and uh, this isn't always the best way. Uh, if it's a simple basal or squamous cell, eh, just, we just cut it out, get nice margins, stitch it up, pretty straightforward. You know, but I've had a couple of people this past year who had radiation therapy for difficult areas. It excels, for example, around the nose, the eyes, the ears, had one fellow who uh, had to put a little contact lens in, but he was right up to the corner. Another person had something that made him look like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer until October, but the redness faded. And after a month or two, you could not see that any skin cancer had ever been there. So that's my first point. For the first 20, 30 years anyway, then there could be some broken blood vessels. Uh, there's no scarring when uh, radiation therapy is, is done the way we do it here. Um, there, uh, of course, could be a scar from pre-existing cancer or from the biopsy. The second thing that people love about this is that it doesn't hurt. It's great for people of, uh, of more mature years who are a little hesitant to go under the knife. I've had people with uh, from overseas with a uh, spoke a different language who were just terrified and when they were reassured that there was no need for surgery that was good their family was very happy that's why we're putting this out there so that not only people but their families can uh, learn a little bit more about it uh, where do we do it we do it right in our own office we have a full-time radiation technician uh, people get a chance to review what's happened after the course of treatment and uh, Jessica gets nothing but excellent reviews. Um, how long does it take? Well, there's a drawback. The individual treatments take 30 to 60 seconds. The visits are about 15 minutes long, generally. Um, it does take a number of visits, though. Uh, the radiation affects cancerous tissue differently, more, than it affects normal tissue. The repair of normal tissue is faster. So what we do is we give fractions or treatments a couple of three days apart. And, uh, and this is why uh, the uh, uh, scarring is much less. Cure rate, a lot of the studies indicate it's as good as anything else, uh, as Mohs or whatever. Well, of course, if I could cut it out, there's clear margins. That's really nice, but that isn't feasible in a lot of these difficult areas we've been talking about. It's usually covered by insurance. We always do what's called verification of benefits to see if there will be any 
uh, out-of-pocket costs. People who have done it usually look back and say, okay, it took a month or whatever, but it went by really fast. And uh, as I say, I've had two individuals this past year who had completed a course of radiation therapy, and then they went on by totally unrelated to develop an additional uh, basal cell carcinoma. The new one, at least in one individual, could have been easily cut out, but he didn't want to hear of it. He just liked radiation, didn't mind coming in, and uh, that's how he did it. When we do find a basal or squamous cell, and if we're going to do radiation therapy, we really always look very carefully to see if there's a second one. And it's not rare. There are a number of people who have done two at a time, and I can think of a couple of people who have had three. Uh, one behind the ear, one on the right, and one on the left side of the face. So in any event, I don't know if this will be available in the area where you are from. It uh, used to be one of the major ways of taking care of basal squamous cells, and it can uh, still be uh, done very nicely, very efficiently. The new equipment, people ask, well, how do you know you got it all? Well, this piece that we have has ultrasound on it. So every time Jessica gives a uh, treatment, she ultrasounds the area and can see the lesion disappearing underneath. Um, of course, there's always a risk of reoccurrence, but we have not had that happen yet, fingers crossed, and um, we'll cross that bridge if we have to. So I hope you add this into the uh, uh, mix when you think about uh, surgery. I often tell people after we've diagnosed a basal or squamous cell that it's as though they're driving along and they've hit a fork in the road. This side is surgery, whether it be plastic surgery, excision with sutures, Mohs microscopically controlled surgery, nothing wrong with it, the right thing for some people. And this side we have no surgery, which is soft radiation therapy. Um, really, it's been an eye-opener for me. I was well aware it existed, but until this new equipment became available, it was a little difficult to really get it done, how to send people to radiation therapy departments, and they did their best. They certainly could do it because there were some people it was the only thing to do, but it was much less convenient, much more expensive, a lot more scary because it wasn't in our office setting. So here it is, Dr. Thomas for Nutmeg Dermatology, Middlesex Dermatology, wishing that you take care of your skin, watch your skin, let us help you with it, whatever we can be of assistance. Thank you.